Hello and welcome to another episode of One Hive TV. I'm your host T. Wells. I want to thank you for joining us. In today's episode, we're going to get into all things One Hive. We've got a number of updates to share with you, some highlights from AMAs we've been having recently with other communities and partners. Um, then we're going to get into our snapshot headlines, and today we're going to take a look at Gitcoin, Ave, Rarible, Loot, Olympus DAO, and Shapeshift. I'm going to wrap things up with a playlist for this week. Uh, we have included chapter section links in the description below. Everybody's time is valuable, so if you want to skip forward to something that interests you most, you should do that. If you like what you hear, like what you see, subscribe, smash that like, and share this video with somebody you think would like it too. First up this week is Gardens, which is now live. We had three Gardens that launched in the last two weeks, the first of which was the Agave DAO, which will manage their money market protocol, which is up and running on the XDAI chain. You can head over to app.agave.finance to lend and borrow USDC, XDAI, RAP BTC, and or wrapped Ether, or stake your Agave for around 14% APY. Next, we welcome Cold Truth Culture to Gardens. And CTC is a community that aspires to empower artists through NFTs. Now, Gardens enables them to move their art curation process on chain through the use of their project token Cold to manage both contributions and incentivize the creation of new content. Uh, you can acquire the Cold token by going to HoneySwap on XDAI and participate in either governance on the Gardens app or you can farm NFTs on CTC's staking app. The staking cold tokens will earn you points that can be spent to acquire limited edition runs of artwork. You can visit coldtruthculture.io to learn more. Last Thursday, the Bright ID project launched their Bright DAO as a garden, accompanied by an airdrop of the Bright token to qualifying community members. A link to the requirements can be found in the description below. In addition to governance, you can use the Bright token to participate in liquidity mining on the Bright Honey Pair via HoneySwap and or wrap them in the Bright Dow Gardens Dash for a nice APY. Further details about Bright Dow and the Bright token can be found at fairlaunch.brightid.org. As we look to the future, OneHive is exploring plans to migrate our Honey token as well as our governance infrastructure to Arbitrum. DAO Seeds Will Griff and Luke Duncan made the case to the community recently, and Luke explained the benefits of having our critical infrastructure on an L2. I think it's really important from a like growth perspective to be on Ethereum mainnet and be part of the light layer two ecosystem, because uh, having the token native to XDAI or even just focusing solely on XDAI becomes a limiting factor um, in terms of our growth, and so we can resolve that. But I think we need to kind of really commit to the, the migration in a way that we didn't commit to Polygon. Um, like we want to move the token and the governance and, um, and make sure that this is something that we're not going to have to move again because this is a significant commitment of resources. It's going to require people to migrate the version of their token. Like um, th this is something that like is going to take quite a bit of, uh, of work to actually accomplish. Um, and it's going to set us up for success in the future. And given the benefits of migrating to Arbitrum, Will Griff helped us get a better idea of what it would take to accomplish the task. So one, one of the main things that we need to modify um, to ensure that we can operate on Arbitrum is um, having an issuance process that happens uh, between the layer two and layer one chains. Um, Basically, the ultimate intention is to migrate Honey to Ethereum, and then if anyone wants to um, uh, bridge it back to XDAI to use an XDAI version of Celeste or XDAI version of Gardens, um, or they want to bridge it to Arbitrum, where I think more uh, like there's likely to be more support in the future for um, Celeste and Gardens. Um, then yeah, anyone can choose to do that as they, as they see fit. But then at that point, uh, Honey is just generally a lot more secure because it lives on Ethereum. Um, it's something that I think is sort of paramount to the future of our, our community. So Honey will be migrated to Ethereum and will be a standard ERC-20 token on Ethereum, um, but we'll have the like governance, the common pool DAO deployment on Arbitrum. Yeah, so that, that's correct maintain all, all of the governance infrastructure that we currently have on XDAI, it will operate exactly the same way. Uh, the interface will be the same 
uh, but it will it will live on Arbitrum. Discussion on the Arbitrum issue is live on both our forum and our Discord, so feel free to weigh in. In an effort to learn more about the origins of OneHive and build out the Canon project, OneHive's Pab and Metaverde hosted an AMA with seed founders Luke, Sem, and Rodrigo last week that takes us back to Aragon and the initial hackathon that brought the team together back in 2019. Highlights today recall the introduction of conviction voting into the governance stack, as well as the challenges of dealing with high gas fees on mainnet. Just so we can stand somewhere in like a timeline, this is around the second half of 2019, right? Yes. Okay. okay. And the the <laughs> where Florida conviction voting was started uh, is on October of 2019. Yeah, if you if you take a look to the to the conversation, I think that one high started kind of the 30th of April or May 1st, something like that, when we started to to chat and the Berlin stuff. The weekend only, uh, really, in the weekend we only had a boilerplate with the UI. But the code, um, it was not working. <laughs> we started using conviction voting uh, after some months when we <laughs> when we had the version one, and it was at the very beginning an Aragon DAO. And uh, David, can, can I interrupt just one second to? to yeah, to, <laughs> because <laughs> there was a very funny story before uh, the conviction voting because. Uh, we stayed together, Gabi, Fabri, me and Luke in, in a house there in Berlin. And when we were going to the to the hackathon, <laughs> we didn't know what to do. And <laughs> and then in the year, uh, Luke started to throw in all kind of ideas. And <laughs> when he started to talk about the conviction voting, you can imagine, you know, when somebody is talking and, and the other start. Uh, opening the mouth to, <laughs> to the to the floor because they don't understand anything. <laughs> it was so funny because nobody understood anything about what Luke was talking about and the conviction voting stuff. <laughs> nobody could, could understand until we uh, arrived to the hackathon and then that's what uh, David started to do. It, it was so cool in the hackathon. <laughs> I, at the end, it was difficult. We were working, uh, many people from many in, cool projects. Uh, I remember Yalda from Autark, Patty from Aragon One, Luke from One Hive, um, who else? Bim from Aragon Black. Uh, th th there was many people from many projects in the same room talking about conviction voting as a side project, like, okay, how can we represent that? And it was super cool from the, uh, for example, having Patty, uh, it was super cool because she nailed it in the uh, aspect of the design. And um, it would not have been this way if we would not uh, gather it together in one room and think about that. I have a very, very nice uh, memory of that day. Uh, yeah, actually, the the idea of of uh, creating this Flora hackathon was also from discussions with Luke and uh, the whole uh, uh, members we, we were we were at that time about the the increasing uh, realization that Aragon was starting to get impossible to use in mainnet and really expensive and we were doing this all these allocation uh, things and all this experimentation and it was becoming prohibitive to, to do it there so we start uh, re researching the the technology that was built by by the by the, the Adepa team they were building this cross-chain and technology and one of the, those chain is XI using all this bridge and, and sidechain uh, 
And at, the, at, at that point, we were uh, trying to create our, our own uh, sidechain. Uh, and we experiment with a lot of these POA smart contracts and stuff. Uh, but yeah, it was really hard and we were not able to finish it something 100% uh, usable. But at the same time, uh, it was great to reflect uh, that that it was important. And, and, uh, and then a uh, subsequent uh, step was actually started looking to migrate to, to XTI and was something we did quite uh, close uh, afterwards that hackathon. So yeah, I passed to, to Luke. Yeah, um, the that hackathon uh, was really cool because we worked on a bunch of stuff and we just crammed in a room for like 48 hours um, and got a lot of stuff done. Um, Flora as like a side chain being a precursor to, to moving to XDI was definitely uh, like we were thinking about how can we how can we make this actually like affordable and easy to use for people. Both of those projects were actually inspired by uh, Zargum and Block Science and, and that research. Um, the Flora one was based on this discount token model, um, uh, which is a, an interesting paper that uh, hasn't actually been implemented anywhere I, as far as I know. Um, and then conviction voting, which um, we're very familiar with, but um, at the time. Uh, the we didn't have any implementation so when we actually moved to xdi it was uh probably several months later because i think it after the hackathon um there was like a little bit more work on conviction voting but it wasn't quite ready for prime time and then we kind of had to wait until we had connect um to build like a different interface on top of it so i think it was a good like four or five months before we actually put conviction voting into production after that hackathon even though a lot of the like really hard problems were solved uh, that weekend. Our next update pertains to treasury management. And the OneHive community recently allocated 15 Honey for a pilot program with Hedgy Finance, an options trading project, which is now nearly complete. Paul and I caught up with the Hedgy team last week while in Denver. Here are some highlights from our conversation. All right, so to get started, um, I'd like to just get into a little bit about Hedgy um, and how y'all got into the options and treasury management game. When we started Hedgy, our goal was to build just an options protocol. We didn't have this big treasury management concept initially, but we quickly saw like, oh, this is where it actually has the most value because for DAOs, treasuries, um, token teams, the big problem is that there's a lot of tokens that are locked right now. Um, industries or, or token teams are essentially paper rich and you, you can't convert that to the type of currency you need to pay like for, you know, rebuild, real bills and uh, employees um, without spot trading or OTC. Options can fix that. And that's why we are where we are. Cool. Paul, why don't you jump in here? Can you break down the basics of proper treasury management and explain how it can benefit DAOs? Yeah, I think um, I think DAOs are evolving, uh, and it's it's sort of an ecosystem that I think, frankly, nobody really, besides maybe a handful of DAOs, like really have a full grasp on what it means to run a DAO. So whether you're paying contributors, employees, or if you're paying for I don't know, legal services or, or whatever else that the DAO might need, like they typically want stable coins and not um, a, a native token. From like a traditional sort of treasury company perspective, right, you need cash to, to run a business. And, and although a DAO is sort of not a business, it's also sort of a business. And, and whether you want to call them contrib contributors or employees, like DAOs have expenses and I think you want the, the, the diversification benefit in converting to stable coin or network based currency, you know, whatever it is, depending on what network you're on, that um, having access to those funds and that liquidity in your treasury gives you more flexibility in what you can do. So I think just having a good, robust kind of diverse treasury is important um, in general. And, and this is all sort of, I think, pretty new. Um, and, and we'll see this evolve a lot as as DAOs mature, um, and I think OneHive is more mature than, than many in some regards, um, but, uh, but you know, I think it, it'll be an ever 
Uh, I think there's a lot of people realizing that that DAOs have this core treasury management and finance um, requirements that uh, that there's a lot of people attacking this market, um, and we're attacking one segment of sort of the DAO wallet, you could say. Cool. So, um, Lindsay, for the benefit of the OneHive community specifically, could you just explain a little bit about how call options work for Honey uh, in the pilot program? So right now, all of those calls, uh, when they get exercised, that exercise goes to you. But if they're not exercised, then people will just hold them or resell them on the, uh, the market. And they'll either go in the money and get closed, which the XI goes to you, or they'll expire, and then the honey goes back to you. Got it. And Paul, I know you had another question for Alex. What would you like to see from the Hedgy One Hive partnership going forward? Um, yeah, I mean, so I think just to touch a little bit more on like the, you know, with, with Hedgy in terms of the tip of the iceberg, I think, I mean, we love that pilot program and i think on like what i can see that being useful for is not just like a one-time thing but like a rolling recurring basis like sort of every you know month you just put on a new set of of call options that help diversify another you know chunk or whatever all right and to wrap things up today um you know Lindsay is a startup offering an attractive treasury management solution for DAOs. Um, what's hedgie's take on decentralization sort of as it relates to organizational decision-making, more generally speaking? It's a complicated issue because I think it goes beyond just like what we see on the face of if you get into like how organizations are most effective um, because, you know, you have concepts like groupthink where if you have everybody that has to sign on for something to happen, you can kind of have stagnation with creativity but yet you all have managed to, to manage a certain amount of uh, decentralization, but also spark quite a lot of creativity. Um, so it's interesting. Like, it, it is an experiment for sure. But, like, you know, I think one of my, my initial, when I was first researching DAOs, one of my initial criticisms was, like, nothing will ever happen. If everyone has to vote, like, it'll just go towards, like, you know, that kind of... Um, Rousseau view of like humanity, like he'll just go towards like the greediest and worse and, you know, whatever. But in, in reality, um, you know, just having explored the DAOs and, and meeting you all, you do see that, you know, you have people who want to explore ideas, great conversations from your, from the one I've community on them. And these creative ideas are getting funded. And now if those creative ideas do have like, um, like owners in the sense, like to bring them to completion, Maybe that's something like we're all exploring now, but I don't know. It seems it seems like a very interesting balance of like decentralization from an organization, but also ownership of ideas. Awesome. Well, Alex, it's been great speaking with you both, hearing your insights, and uh, we look forward to chatting again soon. Yeah, you too. Bye. Right, you too. The Gitcoin community has passed a proposal to provide a grant of 40,000 GTC to support the continued development of CLR.Fund as a partner project in the creation of public goods. The funds will be targeted at a number of important priorities, including work on civil resistance challenges associated with CLR's quadratic voting system. Moving on to Ave, the Harmony project has offered $5 million in liquidity incentives and co-marketing efforts over the next year to encourage Ave to launch on the One Network. The proposal passed last week with near unanimous support. Also on the Ave snapshot, the community has decided to add the following assets to the Ave protocol on the Polygon network. One of the most important projects in the NFT space, Loot, is on our list this week. The community has decided to finalize a critical step in the decentralization of the project by voting to burn the admin keys that have been in place since launch. The pros and cons of this decision were outlined by Dom in a recent Loot Talk forum post. The final result was 88% in favor of burning the keys. The Rarible DAO is one of the most active communities in the space. And on our list again this week for two recent decisions. 
First, the community has decided to join the Dow Treasury Management Fray with the creation of a TM committee with the power to autonomously manage up to 75% of the RARI common pool. Now, the intent here is to diversify existing assets to hedge against a potential prolonged market downturn. The committee will report to the Dow on a monthly basis and they will also attend weekly community calls. Second, the Rarible community has approved $100,000 worth of Rary tokens to sponsor upcoming hackathons such as ETH Online, ETH Lisbon, and Dystopia. In addition to general sponsorship marketing, these funds will be used to support hackathon bounties and live educational content for participants. Next on the list this week is Olympus DAO. The project recently posted to its medium about its Olympus Pro service intended to enable DAOs to incorporate bonds into their emissions program as an alternative to traditional liquidity mining practices. The DAO recently passed a proposal to deploy core Olympus contracts to Arbitrum. It'll have the same UI UXs on mainnet as well as to create an OMWETH pool on Sushi to the tune of around $3.4 million. On to Shapeshift, the DAO recently passed one of the largest workstream funding proposals since the decentralization process began earlier this summer. The community has allocated 300,000 FOX tokens to support a marketing and growth initiative through the end of the calendar year. It will include work on six existing work streams, as seen in the graphic on the right. You can pause the video to take a closer look. Funds will be used to support four full-time positions and bounty work by community contributors. Shapeshift will be partnering with Opolis to provide employment benefits. Details regarding KPIs and other aspects of the initiative can be seen in the Shapeshift forum post linked below. Come along. 